all right ones because i know it kind of winds you up they know it that's why they do it they just try and poke the bears just ne just ignore them ignore them and they probably go away and it also is a small minority i think the most uh, i think i guess the, i would imagine i'm not there i would imagine the majority of people there are you know protesting against the mask mandates or the vaccine mandates that's basically it exhaust from idling engines. Truck horns blare constantly, as they have for days. Don't tell me I need to be vaccinated. Don't you dare tell my kids that they need to be vaccinated. Dan Brubaker, who drove five hours to arrive here last Friday, mans a table piled with donated food. Underneath is a cardboard box. Baby wipes. Oh. So if you can't have a shower, there's other options. <laughs> The convoy is having an impact well beyond Parliament Hill. For blocks, many businesses are closed. Jared Schechter, who works at a coffee shop that has stayed open for takeout, says protesters coming in argue about being asked to wear masks. Yeah, it's been very tough, unlike all of us, all the staff here. There have been... <laughs> it's been very like, Somebody speaking with a mask on, it's just automatically, you just feel like, ugh, come on, brother, just take it off and speak and then put it back on again. But yeah, the... The, the resistance against masks and vaccines in parts of North America and Canada, it's just weird, isn't it? It feels like the way that they kind of, the, the way that they're against it, it kind of feels like it's an affront, like somebody kicked their door down and wants to have, you know, you know um, sexual relations with their wife or something. It's like, that's not, that's not that deep. It really isn't. But I don't know, man. They just seem to have a very different reaction to it, especially than what we are in Europe. Because again, for me, regardless of what my reservations are about the entire thing i just got double jab so i can live my life so i can do the things i enjoy to do like travel go to festivals go to parties um djing places like that's basically why i get it I, I just did it for my own kind of personal benefit i think a lot of people in europe did the same thing they just weighed up you know they kind of especially it's like what happened in france like the whole thing what um, macron was doing where he was basically saying he was trying to annoy people by basically saying that how the only way you could enjoy hospitality and go to bars and cafes and whatnot is by getting double vets because without a vaccine passport you can't get in and i think most people even without that sort of like nonsense um prompt were doing that i know i did i just kind of weighed up the pros hey what 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 would this pass allow me to do what did the negatives and just say you know what the pros outweigh the negatives fuck it let's just get it but of course i drew the line at that no more boosters but it's just weird how kind of viscerally angry they sound when they're talking about vaccines and mask mandates. It's very, very interesting. And then we continue here. This article goes to your Daily Mail with um, focus on the work, focus on the truckers talking about how they don't think Justin Trudeau, the prime minister there, doesn't think that they don't think he basically has any idea of what the regular person goes through, which I definitely agree. It says here exclusive. It says you don't know what it's like to have working hands. Canadian Freedom Convoy truckers plus Justin Trudeau saying his vaccine mandates would keep them out of their rigs of weeks um, at a time and threaten their livelihoods. It's interesting how Daily Mail have kind of normalized having full sentences or paragraphs in their titles, isn't it? Back in the day, your titles would be just a snappy seven or ten words that you'd say to kind of get people locked into your article to read the entire thing. But they give you the entire synopsis in this kind of big chunk at the top. It's really weird, isn't it? It's a way to kind of put together an article but anyway it continues it says the freedom convoy of truckers that has descended on the canadian capital has slammed the prime minister justin trudeau over the government's vaccine mandate the massive uh, cavalcade of trucks pickups and other vehicles have been wrecking havoc on the downtown tour scene um since last weekend sorry deliberately blocking traffic and honking their horns almost non-stop around parliament hill don't get me wrong if you lived around there you'd probably be annoyed regardless of what you think regardless of how much you agree with them um, you would definitely be pissed off after, especially after the first week it's like all the pots and pans remember that thing how flipping r worded was that we would stand outside of our windows or i, I wouldn't i didn't clap once like you know get me to do that lame shit but remember people sapping their pots and pans helping the nhs i was like what you're clapping and patting things for people doing their jobs what next are we going to start having flipping open bus parades for women that get pregnant like is that what we're going to do people, women we don't know like let's relax they're doing their job it's standard and most of them weren't you just look on tiktok they were flipping dancing and shucking and jiving all over the place and doing challenges like nonsense massive calculator there um but truckers have remained defined even as as the protests entered their sixth day thursday vowing to stay put until trudeau's government flips and withdraws its policy on vaccine mandates which is 
it's, this is it but that's the whole point of protesting you're meant to make people feel uncomfortable you're meant to kind of upset people you're meant to make them question things push their buttons that's how change comes about you don't get change by putting on a funky hat you know I mean and and making up you know lyrical chants and then going on your merry way no you make you make change by kicking up a fuss you know making sure people don't sleep for a couple of weeks that's how you actually change things logo trucker guy miss meister is among those who joined the convoy last week after making a 20-hour journey in his big rig from nova scotia the 56 year old who has been on protest since its inception revealed he is committed to sticking it out um i guess that's him right yeah that's him guy mister looking absolutely superb in his truck i love these trucks especially with all the many different gear gear knobs and whatnot like that is that that truck has seen some dangs mandate freedom loads of people there freedom what's that fuck trudeau that's a pretty good sign i'm not going to lie uh yeah living the living the dream um says here i'm in it for the long haul mr said trudeau has to go mr who has been driving a truck since he was 19 said he believes the government mandate is ineffective and that the policy will only hurt him in the fellow truckers i wonder if that's a thing that gets passed down to generation to generation that probably is a thing right i'd imagine certain routes certain companies that you work for it's probably all kind of very family oriented or friends of friends if, you know to make sure everyone that's doing it is legit and isn't going to fuck around because as much as yeah because it's a very important job you know i mean you can't have people just taking the piss or not doing a job properly so i wonder if he gets passed down to you like you have your dad has the role and he basically teaches you how to drive he teaches you how to pick up things how to do all the necessary stuff you get introduced you get vetted remember i, I wonder if that's the thing that's pretty cool that it kind of stays in the family like that and it's clearly a pretty decent career obviously you know the i guess the negatives are that you're always on the road and away from your family a lot but they probably get to see all parts of the country they get to see the, the highs and the lows basically in it um he explained that if he were to bring in a truckload to the united states and return to canada under the current mandate he would have to quarantine and be unable to work for 14 days okay that's the main sticking point it seems like because obviously these people these truckers you know you only earn when you're basically driving so if you're not driving you're not earning and if you're not earning you can't support your family especially in these treacherous times so being 14 days out of work every time you go in and out it's just crazy amounts of days you're working you're losing said as well which would bankrupt him and others when i when i take a load into us come in direct contact with very few people he says if anyone i'm back i back my load into a dock they unload it and the person puts the paperwork into the cab all without any direct contact it doesn't make any sense that's a very good point very very good point they, exactly they don't talk to anybody they're, they're basically self-isolating from the moment they start driving and, unless they pick up a little lot lizard in it Meister said that he has no plans to get vaccinated at least now and would rather wait until more is known about the vaccine's long-term effects which why is that controversial legitimately why is that like why is I, I know don't get me wrong the other snippet i played of people going i'm not getting under any circumstances uh, it's going to turn into a snake <clears throat> that's crazy but someone clearly saying i just not comfortable putting something in my body that i feel like has been rushed is that okay to not to say, is that not okay to say even though you know the evidence probably points to it being more safe than it is bad for you still i don't think that's a, such an extreme thing to say but for some reason that's like conspiracy theory stuff to say it's like you know god almighty when they change the model um year of a, of a vehicle it takes two or three years to get it right so why would you do why why do you get vaccinated right off the bat when you don't know all the bad and good of it uh you comparing yourself to a car bruv all right anyway raising both his hands he also issued a message to the prime minister to trudeau these are working hands you don't know what it's like to have working hands i work for all the people in our country you don't you have to go so yeah trudeau's privilege is coming in and biting him in the buck in it but yeah anyway tara lynch uh, da, da, let's continue about this and then of course go find me announced that they were gonna you know not give the truckers the funds that they were raised i think it was like eight million which is absolutely crazy and insane and then for whatever reason the ottawa police department thanked gofundme on their official twitter 
profile saying we want to thank God for me for listening to our concerns as the city and the police services and the decision to withhold the funding for these unlawful demonstrations is an important step and we'll call on crime process to follow so essentially the Ottawa Police Department are working lock and step with a startup with a company that's meant to be providing people with a means to raise money for whatever cause that they want especially if it kind of abides by the you know GoFundMe terms of services and they got to shut it down police intervention shut it down like this is some scary shit man this is a real 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 scary shit and then of course they then decided to i think off the back of this i think what happened originally I don't, again i don't know why this is the case i was assumed whenever someone raises money from gofundme and imagine if it's like a, a, a serial killer there's some someone ends up setting up a gofundme for them it raises loads of money and obviously gofundme then steps in and says hey this can't run on our site usually i would have assumed when they cancel the the funding page or they basically end it even if it's past even if it's achieved its goal i just assumed they automatically refund the money i didn't i didn't even think it was a thing where they take the money and redistribute it to random charities no i just assumed if you raise money for a cause that they don't feel like aligns with their policies or their tos they just end it and they refund everybody that pledged not the case sometimes they'll take it sometimes they won't depends case to case because i guess in this one they were basically saying they were going to send it to random charities then they said they weren't then they said people could um, get a refund if they ask for it like crazy shit like what do you mean ask for it if, if we're not if the money i sent isn't going to the people that i want to go to give me back my money that's how it should be why were you going to redistribute my money that's not where it's going to go and then of course they clarified it because now i think is for out of nowhere it doesn't make any sense really i don't know why this is the case but ron DeSantis right decided to kind of stick his nose in and get involved governor Ron DeSantis of florida and basically said he's going to investigate um go fund me and prosecute them for the kind of shady stuff they were doing in terms of withholding the funds which is absolutely nuts isn't it like who would have thought that um oh no sorry um let's clarify this so go find me they did say then to simplify the process so after all the backlash they then came out and basically said we're well, now we're doing the right thing so they had to be pushed into being the right thing to simplify the process of our users we'll be refunding all donations to the freedom convoy 2022 fundraiser this refund will happen automatically you don't need to submit a request donors can request so donors can expect to see refunds within seven to ten business days the update we issued earlier enabled all donors to get refunds and outlined the plan to redistribute remaining funds however due to donor feedback we are simplifying the process donor feedback that isn't something you should get feedback from you should just send it you should just send it back to people when they want if they don't want to if the money isn't going to people that they want it to go to donor feedback you know anyway Roden DeSantis is on there next he said go for me versus plans on reading on um, freedom convoy donations sorry further governor don run DeSantis promises investigation so off the back of this some interesting things are going to end up happening they're going to end up shaking some things up and maybe some truths that we all don't want to hear about um, <laughs> um go for me might get raised is there go from your website reversed um, course and decided to automatically refund donations um, florida governor ron DeSantis said saturday morning that he and his state's attorney general will investigate go me after it shut down the fundraiser um west virginia attorney general also joined in asking its residents to contact his office and let him know if they hadn't been victimized by a deceptive act of practice by go me oh my god go me originally shut down donations because of what he called law enforcement reports of violence and other unlawful activity at first go me said that they would um um, refund anyone who asked and donate the remainder of the charities chosen by the freedom convoy i'm not even sure if this is legit this must have been some new terms that they've kind of injected into it because if this is the case it means anybody that raises money for a good cause if somebody decides to swat them or if somebody decides to kind of stand there and be a ba bad faith actor and just start causing fights and shit or just start doing unruly things does that mean your entire donation page gets taken down you don't get the funds that you kind of raised fairly and squarely is that what happens i don't think so i think they just made up something to just obviously take um because again these platforms are not platforms unfortunately they're just mostly publishers aren't they um unless what you're doing aligns with their political ideologies they can't allow you to and again i don't know why we want this why do we want a internet that's divided by your political leanings we should be able to share the same internet the same social media space the same way we share the same flipping world and wherever else we go and hang around it's not as if we have different 
you know shops and bars and beaches and you know restaurants and stuff that we go into that are mostly catered towards people that vote the same way as us who cares what you vote for especially when you're trying to raise money for charity like who gives a fuck really especially if it's going to a good so that what this means if it's going to a good cause and the person happens to be an ardent right winger does that mean they'll take him off the platform huh like ugh. Anyway, however, the website later scrapped the plan saying the donor feedback and let to simplify things. The fundraiser hit 10 million Canadian dollars, around 7.9 US dollars, with $1 million already distributed before the fundraiser was halted. So they sent out 1 million, which is kind of less than what? That's probably like 700,000, I guess, thousand dollars. But the rest of it they kept, it looks like. GoFundMe's original plan didn't sit well with DeSantis. He tweeted, it's fraud for GoFundMe to come to commandeer 9 million in donations and send to support truckers and give it to causes of their own choosing. Of course it is. Like, straight up. Like, such a weird thing. I, I wonder if that's always been a situation. From what I know, I don't think it has. You just get, if you do something that they don't like or there's too much, you know, bad press around it they'll just cancel it and refund everybody but for whatever reason they were gonna send it to charities at you know random charities my ass that was going into the flipping people that work there's pockets probably i'd imagine allegedly i don't know i'm just talking about my ass don't sue me <clears throat> anyway continuing on for that one oh yeah and then to end it actually this is a quite a funny video run the sorry um justin trudeau basically saying he's not intimidated whilst he stands and gives a press conference in an un um what you call it in a secret location somewhere because he was afraid for his life because all the truckers were you know going outside of what is his house house of residence whatever it is so this is justin trudeau talking i want to be very clear we are not intimidated by those who hurl insults and abuse at small business workers and steal food from the homeless we won't give in to those who fly racist flags. We won't cave to those who engage in vandalism or dishonor the memory of our veterans. There is no place in ah, our... I knew he's chatting now. He's asked dishonor the memory of our veterans. What are you talking about, brother? What are you talking about? 